All right. Well, good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Hopefully you are having a, uh, a blessed day. Hopefully your week has been going better or good or whatever it is. And um, we will start out this evening with prayer. But remember, as usual, if you have a praise report, a prayer request, and or a testimony, uh, please make sure that you put that in the comment section below. A prayer request, a praise report, and or a testimony. Make sure that you put that in the comment section below. I see the comments right here. I see you, Missionary Cross. Uh, good to see you this evening online. Uh, Sister Belinda Drake, good to see you again as well. Um, so we're going to go ahead and open up with a word of prayer. So let us pray. Uh, Father, we say thank you this evening for all that you have done. Lord, we say thank you this evening for blessing us. Lord, we say thank you this evening for keeping us. And Father, I just pray that as we um, go about, dear Lord, and as we are um, going throughout life and um, everything that everybody's faced with or challenged with or the things that people are trying to make it through, Lord, I pray that you would keep your word on the forefront of our hearts, dear Lord. And God, I just ask that you would bless our time together, allow us to draw closer to you, to learn more about you, and be more effective in the things that you called us to be. Lord, in your blessed name we pray. We thank for all these things. Amen. 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 So good evening, everyone. I want to say good evening to everyone. Hopefully everybody is doing well. Uh, we have an empty house here tonight. Amen. As usual. Uh, so what I want to do this evening, huh? well, I mean, well, it's empty, though. I mean, we got like, we got Sister Audrey here. We got Sister Sherry here. Who I always feel nervous around because I feel like every time I eat an extra calorie, I think Sister Sherry watching me. Uh, that's just my own, that's just my old conscience getting the best of me. Yeah, that's all that is. We got uh, Sister Tanya, Brother Keith. We got you know, the sound team back there. You know, so I got we got some people. It's just, it's just it's, we got people in the house. And, oh, and the Masons, and I think Brother Al back there. And I don't know who's moderating with Sister uh, Morgan uh, back there, moderating with Sister Morgan. And so yeah, we got some people in the house. Oh, Mo okay, thank you. He's he getting a shot of everybody. He's he getting a shot of everybody. It's packed in here. <laughs> we packed up in here like sardines. Uh, but anyway, anyway, uh, what I wanted to do is I wanted us to kind of go back uh, from this past Sunday, and, and I, I feel like this would be something that would be helpful for all of us because I think with as much as the Bible talks about and God talks about us remembering him and making sure that we don't forget, although it seems as though um, we shouldn't forget, uh, there are things that we should not forget, but we forget anyway because we are forgetful people. We're just prone to forget things. And so since that's the case, uh, what I wanted to do, what I want to do is I wanted us to just have some practical things that we can use or that we can have in our toolboxes as it pertains to our relationship with God. And so this evening I want to talk about 10 encouraging reasons and or tips on remembering God. And obviously this list is not exhaustive. Um, there are things that you might have as a best practice. And so this is what I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask, if you do have a best practice, I can see the screen right here. Uh, I got to move. Uh, I can see the screen right here. And so if you have a best practice, I would like to read it out loud because where you are, if you're on one platform, everybody might not see it. But this is the deal. God knows that we can forget about him, and it's easy to forget about him. And so the first thing I want us to do, tip number one is, is that God knows we need reminders. And this is just a, a few passages of scripture. Uh, we looked at Deuteronomy on this past Sunday, uh, Deuteronomy 6, verse 12, Deuteronomy 8, verse 2, Isaiah 46 and 9, uh, 1 Corinthians 11 and 24, and you all know that is the one that is dealing with um, communion. And one of the significant things about communion 
is that communion, it not only, I think that we need to, and, and I will be honest with you all, uh, that it is challenging um, taking communion sometimes um, since we've been apart um, during this pandemic, um, since we have not been with one another. And I do think it was something special when we got together and we sang the blood song and we took communion together and we were reminded of the sacrifice that Jesus made on our behalf, um, that we were reminded of what he has done for us. And we know that communion um, functions not just as a reminder, but it also gives us hope because it gives us something to look forward to. And so in doing this, um, we understand that when we take communion, one of the reasons that is so important is because communion, the act itself, it is a reminder of what God has done for us, what G, the sacrifice that Jesus paid for us. And so um, that talks about it. Um, Ecclesiastes 12 and 1 uh, talks about us forgetting again. Um, Leviticus chapter 23. And of course, we know Leviticus. And this was the thing about the Lord is that he told them, he said, look here, when y'all get in the promised land, I'm going to set aside, there are going to be certain times of the year. When you get your harvest, celebrate me. He said, there are going to be certain times of the year that I want you all to gather together. I want you to have a feast in my name to bring these things to your remembrance. Now, and this is one of the things that we should be focused on right now in the Advent season or in the Christmas season is celebrating and reminding ourselves of the fact of what Christmas is really about. Uh, there's nothing wrong with having certain times of the year that are special uh, that will allow us to jog our spiritual memories or focus and redirect our attention on the things of God and what God has done for us. He set up calendar days in the Old Testament so that the people would know and be reminded because um, if we don't, We'll gloss right over it, we'll forget it. There are certain things that we don't put an alarm on our phone, we won't even remember about it. And so Leviticus chapter 23, if you read that, um, you see all these feasts that were supposed to happen that were supposed to encourage the people about the Lord and the works of the Lord and remind them of their relationship and their covenant with God. And so God actually gave them days on the calendar that I need you all to come before me and celebrate. Now, why is that so important? Because for the adults, it was a reminder, but for the kids, it was a teaching tool. It was something to give them as they would hand down from one generation to the next. And we see this in Joshua chapter 4 as well as the children of Israel are crossing over the Jordan River, through the Jordan River, and the Lord says, I need you to take the memorial stones out the river, and I need you to take those memorial stones, I need you to set them up as a testimony, as a sign, as a symbol, um, that people, when, when your kids walk by, when your grandchildren walk by, you can tell them what I did for you right here. And so there should be, there should be days, there should be seasons. We see in the scripture that, we need reminders. And so what does this tell us? Don't beat yourself up. Um, I, I don't want you to feel as though that God is somehow in heaven and he is going to slap you on the head because you forget some things. Uh, God knows that we need reminders. Just like there's passages of scripture that deal with anxiety. God knows that we wrestle with anxiety. Just like, you know, and, I, and, I, and I've heard this so many times. I'm going to have to study this for myself because I've heard it said so many times on so many different platforms from so many different people that are over 300. There are 365 verses in the Bible that tells us not to fear. And so um, that means that God knows that we're prone to fear. And so that each day he gives us a reminder each day of the year of why we shouldn't be afraid. And so I, I got to do the research on myself for that one because I've heard it said over and over again. I want to know what all 365 passages of Scripture are on that. But the point is that we need reminders. Um, we need to be reminded um, about our relationship with God, and God knows that. 
And so since we as a church, as we are going into a new year, as we're going into a new place, as we're trying to accomplish and do the things that God wants from us, um, the question remains still is what can we practically do um, to put God on the forefront of our brains? And so the first thing I would say is uh, remove distractions. Uh, now, for those of you all who don't know, if my son is watching, I'm kind of teasing him a little bit because um, I have up here, I've got somebody on their cell phone, I've got Netflix, and I've got a game system, a gaming console. And, y'all, one of these three can take us down. Um, I, I, have, um, I, I have fallen victim. I've grown out of the gaming situation. I don't, I don't play games anymore. It's, they're too hard. They're too complicated. But I will tell you that on many a times, Netflix and or perusing on my cell phone has caught me um, longer or held me longer than I wanted to be held as far as my attention is concerned. And we have to make sure that we consciously, that we make a decision, and that we are intentional about removing distractions out of our lives. There are things that will distract us. I mean, I, I, everybody, I didn't, see, somebody might say, well, I'm not moved by Netflix. Well, you're a rare breed. Um, you, you moved by Netflix? You're not moved by Netflix? What distracts you, Sister Audra? Outside of Bama football. Cleaning? Oh, Lord. This is awesome. Cleaning distracts you? In the browser. In the browser. Okay, well, I see you, yeah. Perusing the web, the high-speed internet distracts me. Uh, phone, I, I can play. I got the Domino's app on my phone. Um, all, all I'm saying is, is that there are things that distract us and take our time, our energy, and our attention away from God. And so if we want to make a habit of remembering God and growing in our relationship with God, we've got to be willing to remove the distractions because they're not going to be removed accidentally. Um, they has to be intentional. And one of the things about that is in the, in the Old Testament, one of the things that you see in the Old Testament, especially as the people went to the promised land, um, you see all these references to these high places. Um, these places were, that were calling the people's attention to the foreign deities or those foreign gods, those lowercase g gods. And as they left those high places there, they were actual distractions from their God. And so those high places became a snare and a trap um, to the people. Um, they became, as you call, a stumbling block. And so we have to make sure that if we're going to grow with God, we need to make sure we remove the stumbling blocks. Um, because if we're not careful, you know, Netflix, they got that automatic roll feature. I remember I first found Jack Bauer in 24. Uh, man, I watched like a whole first season in one day. So, yeah, I said Jack Bauer on point. So next one, number three is we need to set up reminders ourselves. Uh, and this is a, something that we can easily do. You can use technology to your advantage. Calendar reminders, alerts, alarms, scheduled messages, and other things can be used. And so to, and not even that, there, there are Bible apps on our phones. If you have a smartphone, even Android users, smartphones. If you have a device, there are apps that you have that you can download that can give you either a daily, an hourly, or some type of reminder to let you know that, hey, you need to read your Bible. Um, you can start a plan, and on that plan, you can enable a reminder, and in doing so, that can happen. Or you can even say, um, have a, a friend, somebody that you're in agreement with, a group, whatever it is, that sets up a reminder so that you are making sure that you, all your days don't get away from you 
and you have not prayed, you have not read your Bible, you have not um, streamed service, amen, something, um, set up some sort of reminder, set up something that will help you as a tangible way to redirect your attention back to um, the things of God. And another thing, now to me, this is probably one of the most important ones, probably should put that at 10, uh, but that is community, uh, community. Hebrews 10, 24 says, let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works, meaning that we do better in the presence of other people. And what we have to understand, you all, is that our faith was never designed or God's main intent wasn't just to produce a whole bunch of lone wolves, but to produce members that make up a body, produce people that can work together and live in community. And this is one of the things that when we, people that grow the most typically are people that are a part of some sort of community and whatever it is you do. Uh, I, I see in, in the maintain, don't gain, all these people doing all this stuff and people be messaging and texting and, and I, I'm going to go and tell the truth to share. Some of these walker miles be suspect. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I, some of these, some, I don't know. So I, that needs to be a way that we can verify the documents or something. Cause I'm thinking, uh, some of y'all ain't walking that much. Let's just go ahead and tell the truth right now. It's some folk I know. It's some folk I know that's really getting the miles in and really doing it. Uh, but some of these folk they ain't putting in the works for sure. I think they fudging numbers. But hey, that's neither here nor there. That's neither here nor there. Uh, I don't get any points. I just don't get any points. But all I'm saying is, when it's done in community, there is an extra um, layer of accountability. There's more encouragement. Um, we can spur one another on. We can encourage one another. Um, and, and then, you know, like even when my wife and I work out, she wants to work out together sometimes because she thinks it's a competition. I'm thinking, look here, man, I ain't competing with you. You know, it's like she came outside the other day. I'm, I'm going to talk to y'all over here now. Um, she came outside the other day, and I was squatting, and she tried to be coy, slick about it. She said, oh, that's the same word I use. I said, I know the same way you use <laughs> so me trying to challenge me, you know, talking about some. So I think that's the same same amount of ways. So I say it is the same amount of ways you use. And, you know, like I'm supposed to feel inferior about myself because we can do the same. And so for some people and for some of us, we do better in a group because it adds extra motivation. And not just that. Um, there are most of the scriptures in the New Testament that talk about spiritual growth, that talk about transformation, that talk about worship, um, that talk about accountability. It happens, it's to the church as a whole and not to individuals. Uh, we read the you passages as singular, um, but really that's you is, that you is plural. It's for all the believers. And so I think that for someone that really wants to be intentional for someone that really wants to grow in their relationship with God, um, you've got to make sure that you are really connected to a community, a body of believers. And, and that's why I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to next year when we start small groups because what that will allow to happen, it will allow the interaction. And as much as I believe um, in the preached word of God, because obviously I'm kind of biased towards it, um, as much as I believe in that, I know for a fact that a lot of good growth, uh, a lot of maturation, it happens via conversation. It happens via going back and forth. And so it's good when you can get God's truth or you can read something in the Bible or you can hear a sermon or even hear a worship song. And you can share it with somebody else, and y'all can go back and forth and talk about it. That, or you can have a, a, be surrounded by like-minded people that can encourage you along in your faith. And so we need to make sure that we understand the importance of community and the importance of the right community. Because there are some people 
who for whatever reason, and I, and I work with people like this. Um, I work with people that told me, um, Magic Quincy, we're going to make you do so and so and so and so before you leave. Magic Quincy, you know, and I'm thinking like, why do you want me to act like I'm not a believer? And it was like, I, I don't get it. Well, I do get it. I understand it. But what I'm saying is, especially if you work in an environment like that that's, that's heavily negatively charged, or you work in an environment where there is no, there's nothing that has to do or promote anything concerning the fruit of the Spirit or the godliness that God, the holiness that God wants from us. If you live, if you work in an environment like that, or even if you live in an atmosphere like that, you need to be connected to something that is going to keep God on the forefront of your mind. Because if you're not connected to something that's going to keep God on the forefront of your mind, um, then it's easy to forget about God. So it's not just that you connect it, but you connect it to the right people and or the right person. Because in that, that's where the accountability comes in. Because everybody thinks, well, you can't judge me. You can't judge me. Um, you need somebody somewhere. Somebody, you, you, you know, you get judged. We, 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 we need it. You, you need somebody to say, hey, man, you know, I, I was um, listening to how you talk to your wife. And that, that ain't cool. That's not, um, that's not God honoring, um, you know. And we, if you don't develop relationships or we're not around people that we allow those things to happen, um, we won't grow. And the Bible talks about that in Proverbs, iron sharpens iron. And we know that that's not just about the male, but humanity as a whole, that we grow better together. And so community is, I believe, one of the best things, and that's why I believe that that's why I believe that church is so important. Um, that, and I know that we we're, we're, we're doing church differently now with most of you all at home, and um, I'm looking forward to next year when we start the small groups, and there can be some interaction and some back and forth amongst one another, and it's not just me talking to a camera, uh, but it's actually people being able to bounce things off of one another and discuss and, and dive deeper into some things and get different perspectives, um, that'll be good. And so community is number one. You, you, you cannot, um, the chances of you growing effectively in your relationship with God by yourself um, are slim to none, slim to none. Um, we need the, the sandpaper and the rough edges to smooth, to smooth out the rough edges. And I know that with community comes all sorts of problems because then you got to deal with people. Um, you got to deal with your mess and they mess. And you got to deal with this and that and the other. Um, as much as I like being by myself, it does not make for an effective family when I tell everybody, leave me alone always forever. Um, it, it, it just doesn't. Community causes us to stretch. It, make us, it makes us uncomfortable. And it produces growth. It really produces growth. And when we see somebody else going through something or dealing with something or hearing testimony, either we're encouraged by it or we can go and encourage them. And I found that when we encourage someone, for whatever reason, that, that law, that principle of sowing and reaping, the law of the harvest, harvest, when I sow encouragement, I find myself being encouraged as well. And so community, you all, is very, is very important. So that's the that's probably one of the ones I would rank in the top, top two as far as um, a tip or encouragement on remembering God is make sure that you're connected to the right group of people. Um, yeah, make sure you're connected. So community is number four. And then number five, priority. Now, this is what I learned. Now, and, 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 I, and I know God, I know people that feel differently, and I know people who Folk going to do what folk won't do, period. At the end of the day, nobody can make anybody do anything that they don't want to do. Nobody can make you say something you don't want to say. You wanted to say it. You were just looking for the right opportunity to say it. Uh, nobody can make you. Are you going to make me go off? No. You didn't want to go off. You just been waiting for the time to present itself. I mean, it, it, it is, 
I believe, for the most part, 90 to 95% of what we do, we absolutely intend to do it. Um, so, if I'm one that says, I want to grow in my relationship with God, but I'm not making him a priority, that's just tell the truth. You really don't want to grow. Because anything that you want to do, you're going to make it priority. And so when I say make priority, I'm talking about make intentional and intelligent decisions. You know you well enough to know better. Here it is. I think this should be a proverb somewhere. You know you well enough to know better. I know me. I, I know me. I know me. I know me. I know that if I go to Publix right now and pick up Captain Crunch Crunchberry, there's no way I'm saying I'm going to put this in the pantry and wait for a special occasion. My special occasion will come when I wake up in the middle of the night. And I'm thinking, man, you know, them crunch bears, Captain Crunch in there, and Captain Show calling my name. I know me. I know that at a certain time, if I have not stopped, um, if, if I know, like, for instance, like, we're going to go home. I, I, I got the prayer call in the morning. I know I got to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning. I know that if I go home, when I go home is not the time to say, you know what, let me pop on Netflix. Let's watch a couple shows on Netflix. I know me. That, no, 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 no. You've got to set yourself up for success. If you say, and, and I heard this before, um, your time, your, if you, let's say you say, you know what, I'm going to get up in the morning and I want to spend X amount of time with God. I, I want to catch the prayer call. Hint, hint, catch the prayer call. That's part of being part of the community. But I'm saying, if you say this thing, if you say these things, and then you don't make the effort, set stuff in place to go to bed on time, you know, it's not a priority to you. I mean, don't, it's not just going to just magically happen. And it's just like, ah, oh, the Lord woke me up this morning at 4 o'clock. I didn't have to set my alarm. Well, Lord, Lord, if you want me to wake up again tomorrow, then you'll wake me up again with your loving finger, and I won't have to use my alarm. No, no, mm -mm, mm -mm. Make an intelligent, intentional decision to make God a priority. Stop saying it's just going to just happen. And some people, and some folk, um, y'all real spiritual on me, because then y'all blame that on the Holy Spirit. Well, if the Holy Spirit wants me, then he'll do it. He, he, he gave you an alarm clock. You, you know... You, yeah, wisdom. It's the whole book of Proverbs is about it. Use it. So all I'm saying is this, is that if you really want to make God a priority, one of the things that we need to do is that we need to make intelligent and intentional decisions, and we know ourselves. And that kind of goes back to community as well, uh, you know, because there are times when my wife will say, now, babe, you know you got so-and-so and so-and-so. And I remember one time, it was a Saturday and it was, I, you know, I've been busy all week long. And then on Saturday, I, I told, you know, I said, y'all, I'm told, I said, I got to go study. And so I was, in, I was in the room studying. And really, I just didn't want to be bothered by nobody. I wasn't studying. Um, I was just in there, and I was just watching Netflix. And she came in there, and she saw me watching Netflix. She said, uh, so you know you got to preach tomorrow, right? And I forgot what Charles watching said. When you get up there, I don't want to hear nothing about that. I want to hear about the Bible. I'm thinking. I said, why are you going up out of here? You messing up my time with the Lord. But all I'm saying is, is that she knew me well enough to know, hey, you wasting time. Um, you, you, you're not, you're not making, you're, you're not taking advantage of the situation for what it is. And so for us as well, as believers, as God's children, um, we have to ask ourselves, are we really being intentional? And one of the, one of the things I, I um, just a practical step, like when we were having church in person, if you are always late to church on Sundays, then maybe you need to change up your routine. If you get to the end of every week and you say, man, I, I meant to do this, I meant to do that, and I didn't, you need to change up your routine. 
You, you, you need to sit down, get a piece of paper, and write out what you want to do, plan it out, and do it. Um, especially the older as we get with Christ, um, the longer that we walk, we think it will become easier. Uh, but it's, it's, it's so easy just to snap back or fall back that you have to be intentional about making God a priority. And whatever that looks like to you, um, however that looks to you, uh, for some it might be adding certain things or taking away certain things, uh, but at the end of the day, you know you well enough to know better. And so I don't know, and, and that's one of those things where it's different for different people. Um, some people are night owls. Some people do better in the morning. Some people do it on a way to work. Whatever it is that you have to do um, to make sure that God is a priority, that's what you need to do. That's what we need to do. And so, and then, so, number five, you need to prioritize. And, you know, really, y'all, that's not even to pray about. That's just something to do. Um, you know, don't just, well, I'm going to pray that the Lord help me make him a priority. No. Just do it, period. Um, and then number six are visible evidences. This is a picture, and this is one thing I do appreciate. Uh, and, I, and sometimes I think my wife be low-key trying to slide stuff at me for me to work on. Because um, it says, on our refrigerator, it says Colossians uh, 3, 12 to 14. So, chosen by God for this new life in love, I'll dress in the outfit God picked out for me. Compassion, kindness, humility, quiet strength, discipline, be even-tempered, content with second place, quick to forgive an offense, forgive as quickly as God forgave you, regardless of what else you do, you put on, wear love. It's your basic, all-purpose garment, never be without it. And so... Just with that as a visible reminder, um, you know, it's like, am I wearing the right clothes? When, when I leave out for the day, when I come home, have I been dressed in the right garment? Have I been, um, have, I, have I put on love? Have I, you know, and just looking at that, have I been compassionate? Have I been kind? Have I been content with second place? Am I walking in humility? Am I willing to forgive others as quickly as I need God to forgive me? Um, Visible reminders like that, and I and I get now why also why some people. Now I'm not talking about the people that put the Bible. You know they got that big the big family Bible. Um, back in the day, there used to be these things called coffee tables, and I don't know if you know what a coffee table is, but there used to be these things called coffee tables. And what a coffee table was, it was a table in the middle of the living room that they put the ashtray and the TV guide on. Uh, <laughs> And the Bible. <laughs> if you live in the house that had a Bible, they, in the Bible. Uh, I, I didn't grow up in a house that had a Bible. And so I, I, the big one that you got to turn like this, like it was from Lord of the Rings. Uh, boom. And you open that thing open. And it, I mean, it had the big old print in there that you could just see it from across the room. Now, that was supposed to serve as a visible reminder of the importance of God's word. You, you walk into some people's houses, and they have on the, their doormats, it says, as for me in my house, we're going to serve the Lord. It's supposed to be a visible reminder. Um, in the Old Testament, they were supposed to wear tassels on their clothing um, with the law it, to remind them of the things of God. And so we need to make sure the temple in the Old Testament served as a visible reminder uh, we need to set up visible reminders of visible evidences of God in our lives so that we do not forget him. And so um, at our house, at any given time, you'll see little sticky notes because uh, my handwriting's not good enough. It'll look like it's written in Greek or Hebrew. So, uh, but there are sticky notes around the house um, that remind me of certain things, especially when I, when I don't... Um, but I don't have quiet strength, and I just have brute strength, um, and I'm just talking out of place. There are things that will remind me of God and what God expects of me. And so whatever visible reminder you need, do it. Um, you'll be amazed at what would happen when you place Scripture in different places and you read it. Everybody goes to the refrigerator. You can't go to the refrigerator without, you know, reading Colossians and wondering whether or not we have on the right clothes. 
And so I said all that to say, um, set up visible reminders, evidences, um, so that you can kind of help yourself to be reminded of God and the things of God. Uh, because you think about how many things we see throughout a day, I'm pretty sure a, a lot of it doesn't have anything to do with God. Um, you know, what we watch on TV, uh, what, you know, what most of us listen to on the radio, uh, the conversations that some of us um, engage in, or sometimes you're not even trying to engage in that mess. It just come at you. Uh, it's, so it's good to have things that we set up intentionally um, to remind us of the goodness of God. And then um, number seven is it takes discipline to be a disciple. It takes discipline to be a disciple. This kind of takes intentionality to a whole new level. Set a bit of time. Put a cap on how many shows you're going to watch on Netflix. If you know that you can, you know, watch 12 shows back to back, you got to put a cap on that thing. Look, I'm going to watch two episodes of Blackish tonight, and I'm done. That's it. Two episodes, and I'm not watching any more. Two episodes, um, I, and, and I'm done. We need to discipline ourselves. Um, and and, and there, there has to be a way or a realization that we come to as believers, and we realize that, yeah, the Holy Spirit is, he, he, he's energizing us, he's renewing us, uh, but we got to work out our own salvation. Um, there are some things that we're responsible for. Um, there are some things that God places in our control that he expects of us. And so with that, I've got to be willing to be disciplined. If I'm, if I, if I'm supposed to, you know, do whatever I'm supposed to do, I need to make sure that I... I'm disciplined in it. And if I'm not disciplined, it's not. Look, you don't grow spiritually accidentally. There comes a point where it has, you, you have to take responsibility for your walk with Christ. And the way that you take responsibility for your walk with Christ is that you become disciplined. And you do know that to be a disciple, that is the root of the word discipline. We have to learn in the way. There are certain things that we're supposed to observe, certain characteristics that we need to have, a certain temperament that we need to embody. Discipline. As, as believers, we have to have discipline. We need to have discipline if we are going to grow in the things that God wants us to grow in. We good? Oh, okay. It's me? Okay. My bad. So, Discipline. And then number eight is consistency. You can just give me a hand help, Mike. I'll be good. Consistency. Um, this is probably the number one um, thing that kills a lot of us. Thank you. All right. So and what I mean by that is, is that oftentimes... When we fall off the wagon, we just give up all together, and we'll abandon it all, all. Cause I can't. You, now, Sister Sherry noticed about me because we we we've been walking together a little bit over the past year, and so. But what this is what I can say that in discipline, being disciplined, we develop consistency, and one of the things that the Lord looks for. He doesn't look for perfection as much as he looks for faithfulness. And see, we have to be consistent in our efforts to grow and mature and not perfect. No one is going to be perfect, but we can all be consistent. Because let's just be honest. Um, you, you're going to have a bad week. You're going to have a bad day. You're going to have a bad month. And you might even have a bad year. There are going to be some times where you say, you know what? I'm just not doing it today. I'm not feeling it. And I get that. I think the Lord gets that. I think he understands that. That's why he told us we need the Sabbath day. That's why he gave them the year of Jubilee to autocorrect, to rest, to not work, to break up the routine, to let the people rest. And I'm a firm believer 
that resting says that I trust God to do what he says he's going to do and what I need him to do. That's why I believe resting is so important, and that's something that the Lord convicted me on. But I can't allow one bad day or one bad week or even a bad month to stop me and just abandon everything and not keep doing what I think that the Lord wants me to do and making him a priority. Um, you're going you're gonna to blow it. I, I'm, I'm just going to tell you right now. You're going to blow it. Um, you, you're not going to bat a thousand. Nobody bats a thousand. One of the things that was encouraging to me is that I, a, a Hall of Fame baseball player hits, what, three out of ten, like four out of ten? Hall of Famer. Hall of Famer. A Hall of Fame basketball player is like, what, 60 something percentage field goal percentage? Hall of Famer. So, what does that say about us? Consistency. We just need to be consistent in the things of God. And what I found out about God is that if we are faithful over whatever it is, he grants us with more. That if we're making the most out of whatever we have, he grants us with more. Just simply, sometimes, and I, and I heard um, Pastor Fred Luter say this, um, and because everybody's trying to, well, man, how'd you get this? How'd you do this? How'd you get elevated to this position? And, and you know, and everybody wanted to be elevated to a position. And he says, I practiced the ministry of presence. He said, I just showed up. He said, I just showed up. He said, I was just there. He said, something come up. He said, nobody was there. I was there. He said, I was just consistent. And in today's day and era where everybody's clamoring over gifts, who can do what, who can say what, or um, all these other things, God is looking for somebody that is faithful. And so if you want to make God a priority, whatever you're going to do, try your best to be consistent at it. Um, we have to be realistic. In the Bible, and in, in Paul even talks about that in Corinthians, where he talks about the believer, the single believer and the married believer, whereas if you are single, um, you got certain freedoms. You've got certain things that you can do that as a married person, you can't do. If you married, um, you better temper your expectations or the things. You can't just talk about some, well, I'm just going to do this for it. I'm going to sell out for the Lord. You better make sure um, that your household understands that as well and that you're doing those things. And I and I and people say, well, you know, you got to spend two hours a day in prayer in order to really tap into the, the move of God. Hey, you know what? That might not be something that you can do. You can start out with this hot 15 minutes two times a week. And if that's what you got, you know, hey, some people just might say, you know what? I just need to make it to church on Sunday. I, I just need to stream once a week. Start somewhere. Be realistic. And don't start out like that person that's been sitting on the couch their whole life. And then you just jump up and say, I'm just going to show up at the marathon. You know, you can't just show up and run a marathon. Uh, you got to, there's some baby steps involved in that. And so don't overcommit yourself and don't over-exasperate yourself um, by trying to be reaching, going out there too far, trying to do too much. And that's another thing about community. Um, you can have people in your life that, that can give you realistic expectations. Um, then what I found with this also is that oftentimes we put burdens on ourselves that the Lord never intended for us to carry. Um, you're trying to do, be this super human believer, Christian that can outdo and do everybody. And the Lord like, okay, you cool. It don't take all that. And so we need to make sure that we're realistic in making God a priority um, and that we don't overdo it, overexert ourselves. And in the process, um, wind up being, a, um, being like Martha and Mary where we have Jesus right here and we're missing him um, because we're focused on all these things but we're really missing the point that God's trying to po um, poke us with. And so um, be realistic in your expectations of yourself. And I would also say be realistic in your expectations of others. Um, th there's something about stooping to someone's level um, and allowing them to be able to um, walk and grow in Christ. Um, if, if Jesus can condescend to our level, 
then there should be some levels that we're willing to condescend to as well. And so, you know, and now, now some, some dogs just don't hunt. Amen. There is, now, I don't want to, y'all, there is a such thing as bad ground. Amen. All right. So you don't, I don't go through all your seed. As you ask, scatter a few seeds, you figure out which ground is good, which ground is bad, and so on. Don't waste all your seed on bad ground. Uh, so be realistic. And then number 10, before we, um, we go to announcements, is that it's beneficial to have a um, good relationship with the Lord. And Psalm 103, Psalm of David says, Praise the Lord, all my soul, and all that's within me. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. And this is why it's good to be reminded of God. Because he forgives, not some, but all your sins that if we could just bring our attention back to the person and work of Christ, that we will see that all of our sins are forgiven. He heals all your diseases. He redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. He satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth or your strength is renewed like the eagle's. That when we focus on God, um, he puts us in a better place. There are benefits to making God a priority. And that's just one of the passages of scripture. My, my life scripture, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And the things you desire will be added unto you. Um, it's a blessing in making God a priority. So these 10 tips, and I'm pretty sure you have some other ones that the link over here is broken, so I can't see your tips. But if you have something that you can share with someone else, um, share with someone else, I'm pretty sure it would be a blessing. And next time, we're going to have Sister Audra is going to come up and do the announcement.